On this special baby animal episode of Bondi Vet. Oh, nice. It's always a favourite test of mine. The good old faecal test. Gerardo gets his hands dirty, helping a puppy in danger. Oh. We've got something. Okay, there's definitely something sounding abnormal there. A shocking diagnosis for Misty Blue and her devoted new owner. Is there a chance she can be saved? She is absolutely beautiful, but I can see straight away the problem. And young Watson's come off second best in a cat fight. Can his eye be saved? Poor boy. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Are you going to tell me what you did? Why are you vomiting? That'd be easier. Just tell me. At the emergency hospital on Australia's Gold Coast, Gerardo has his hands full with an excitable puppy. So much energy. Nala is a six-month-old Australian bulldog. She's a super cute puppy with heaps of energy, but the owners brought her down today because over the last week she has been intermittently vomiting. My concern is that it could be something like a foreign body that's stuck in her gastrointestinal tract or something like parasites, which are common in puppies. Have a feel of your belly. Hey, your belly feel okay? <coughs> puppies eat all sorts of random things, so try and figure out what's going on. Big sniff. Big sniff. <laughs> Her belly is pretty comfortable, which makes obstructions a little bit less likely. So I'm going to start with checking out her poo to see whether or not there are any parasites in there. It's always a favourite test of mine, the good old faecal test. Oh, nice. Faecal testing is one of the most common tests that we do for puppies because they get gastro all the time. It can be pretty disgusting. Fragrant. We now have a look under the microscope. One of the things that I don't want to see is hookworm. It's one of the most common but deadliest parasites that puppies can get. Oh. We've got something. Feed up what's going on. Nala actually has hookworm. Hookworm is a very common parasite. She probably got it from eating some other dog's poo while on a walk or something like that. It causes severe inflammation in the intestinal tract and if it goes on for too long, they can become severely dehydrated and also anemic to the point of death. We're gonna get us started on treatment immediately. This is his anti-parasitic medication. Kill that hookworm quick. Nom, 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 nom. It's your medication time. Are you not gonna be? You're gonna be crazy puppy. You're gonna be a crazy puppy. You're gonna be a crazy puppy. Nala is super energetic and such a beautiful puppy and having puppies in the hospital definitely makes this shift go a lot quicker. A bit of a mess, but we got it all in. Hey. That's gonna be fun for mum and dad at home. The plan is we'll keep Nala in overnight to make sure that her vomiting is stopped and she can keep food down, which is really important for them before they go home. Are you ready to go home? Are you ready to go home, Papa? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Nala has done awesome in hospital. She's eaten some food, kept food down. She's no longer nauseous and she's looking pretty excited to head home. So it's time for home. Hey, Nala. Are you ready to go home? At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Faith and little Hugo have brought in a tiny five-week-old kitten. She wasn't eating, so I've been syringe feeding her for about two weeks, but I've noticed her breathing has got really heavy. I don't know what's wrong with her. She might have pneumonia or something, but I'd do anything to save her. Hello, I'm Hi. Lisa. How are Hi, you? how are you? Good. Faith, this is Hugo. Hello, who's here? Misty? Misty Blue. Okay, bring her through. <laughs> Maybe. 
I don't know, there's just something special, something special about her. And I just think it, she was brought to me for a reason. So I just hope nothing too bad is wrong. So what happened? Well, I got her from the pound yep. um, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, I saved her from death row and her mum was put to sleep because she had the cat flu. Mm -hmm. So we had two really good days of her eating mm -hmm. but then I just noticed her breathing okay. last night and I thought, well, it's getting worse. And then I, I thought I'd bring her in because it was quite shallow. Well, let's pop her up on the table. As soon as Faith takes Misty Blue out of the blanket and puts her on the table, I can tell straight away that her breathing is not normal. She's got so much abdominal effort, her chest is moving so much more than it should be, and this little kitten has got something seriously wrong. So she's obviously not been able to run around as no, much as I've some never of the other kittens. I've never seen had. her run. Mm -hmm. She'll play with a stick. But she, she's, she's pretty quiet. Yeah, she's quiet. Okay, well I imagine she's not going to be able to do much with her breathing like that. I'm just going to take a listen. It's all right, little girl. Okay, there's definitely something sounding abnormal there. Oh, baby. Mm, it really doesn't look like she's had any trauma. It's not like she's being run over or anything. Sick. I'm sick from worry. Like, yeah. All right, so it's pretty obvious that she's not breathing normally. When I listen to her chest, I'm actually hearing gut sounds. So that concerns me a little bit because the gut sounds should be in the abdomen. So she might actually have like a hole in her diaphragm and her organs have come out of her abdomen into her chest. Um, so how would that have happened to her this young? At, at this young, it, it may have been something that she has had from birth. Do I right, darling. From my examination, a diaphragmatic hernia would be at the top of the list, but other possibilities would include fluid in her chest, some sort of a mass, an infection. Without taking some x-rays, I'm not going to be able to tell. Is there a chance she can be saved? Look, if it's, if it's a diaphragmatic hernia, or if she's got some sort of hernia into her chest space, the only way that we can really fix it is to do surgery. But she's so little. Oh, she's tiny. Oh, that is not good. At SASH, Lisa has just x-rayed tiny rescue kitten Misty Blue to find out why she is struggling to breathe. She's got a massive hernia. So she's just got all these abdominal contents in her chest with this tiny little bit of lung and no wonder why she can't breathe normally. That is shocking. That's really bad. We're gonna have to tell your mum. It doesn't look very good, sweetness. No. The only treatment for Misty Blue's condition is surgery and it's pretty risky for such a tiny little kitten. I'm gonna go tell Faith the news and I hope that she's ready for the commitment. Hey baby. Okay, so we managed to take the x-rays. She was a very good little girl for them. Um, and they do confirm that she's got a diaphragmatic hernia. Now what that basically is, is that there is a hole in her diaphragm and her abdominal organs, um, so intestines and possibly even a bit of liver, have come through this hole from her abdomen and they're sitting in her chest. Okay. So that's why she's breathing so hard, because she's trying to use all her energy to make that tiny little bit of lung work, because there's just no space for the rest of the lungs. And, you know, it's not something that she's going to get better with if we do nothing. And in fact, her breathing is just going to get worse and worse. And if more organs go from her abdomen into her chest and take up even more space, then the amount of lungs she's got to breathe with is going to be even less. And, and you know, she may not survive that. Oh, she's so beautiful. Just, she's come this far, you know, from the pound. I just wanted to have a chance. Well, she's lucky to have you, and I, you brought her here, and, and this is her best shot. And she's purring. She'll get a big operation tomorrow. We're going to look after her, I promise. 
Breaking this news to Faith is so difficult. She's so connected and attached to Misty Blue. She loves her with all her heart. And now she knows that without this risky surgery, Misty Blue probably won't survive. And there's a chance she won't survive the surgery either. What a huge step Faith has to take. We love you, Misty. Okay, let's tuck her into bed. We'll look after her, I promise. Okay, we're gonna look after you, little one. Okay, we make a promise to your mum. We'll do our best to get you through this. Okay, love you. You go in here. I love you, Bobby. Hi, beautiful. I know. The team at SASH are about to start the urgent operation to repair Tiny Misty Blue's massive hernia. Good girl, Misty. Very brave. Hopefully we can fix you. Specialist surgeon Dr. Steve Burnside will be carrying out the delicate procedure. The reality is with this surgery that she could die at any time. Um, unfortunately, being so small, being compromised to start with, uh, it, it really is touch and go. Here we go, girls. Yep, holding. Let's do it. The clock is ticking. Making an incision, girls. The hole in the diaphragm has resulted in Misty Blue's organs being in the wrong spot. All right, trying to find her kidneys. Spleen, where's the spleen? Everything that should be in its abdomen is now in its chest. Suddenly, there is a problem. What's that, mate? We must have a leak somewhere. We can't ventilate unless we have a seal. Come on, Misty Blue. Hold in there, tiger. She's just tiny, it's like anesthetising a little mouse and our equipment's for, you know, bigger dogs and bigger cats, but we can't ventilate unless we have a seal. Okay, sorted. Alrighty. Let's get her out of there. Oh. Okay. Okay. Things have gone pretty well, it's a bit dicey, but hopefully this has been enough to, uh, to give her a successful future because uh, she certainly was going to be in trouble without it. She's a little fighter. A real little fighter. At SASH, brave little Misty Blue has astounded Dr Steve Fernside and the team. Tough little critter, aren't you, hey? Against the odds, the tiny five-week-old kitten has made it through life-saving surgery. How'd it go? Hey, Elise. Oh, Good. Here she, Here she is. Here she is. Now, look, it all went really well. I mean, the hernia was the biggest part. Massive. The hernia was huge, the cat was small. Oh. It was not uh, without its moments, but she's doing really well. I mean, she's yeah, so she far, she's recovering like she's well. She's breathing beautifully. And she's breathing so much better, so that's oh, a good start. Good job. Anyway, Hi. she's got a little way to go yet, but um, so far, we're, we're optimistic. It's good. It's great. She's nowhere near out of danger, but the hardest part is done, and I've just got high hopes now that she's gonna pull through this one. Two very special visitors, Faith and Hugo, can't wait to see their precious little girl. Oh, my baby girl. She's so fine. Hi, baby. Can you see how much better the breathing is? When I said goodbye to her yesterday, I didn't think I was going to see her. She's got a long way to go, but so far she's definitely taking steps in the right direction. So she got through the hardest part. The hardest though, part. She? Oh, you precious little thing. <laughs> go, Misty! <laughs> Misty power. Hey, gorgeous girl. At Sash, Brave little Misty Blue has amazed everyone. Hey, you're playing like a normal kitten. She's fully recovered from major surgery to repair her massive hernia, and it's a big day. Misty, are you ready to go home? Are you showing me that you're ready to go home? 
Misty is doing so much better. She's bright, she's eating well, she's breathing normally, she's even putting on weight, and she's behaving like a normal kitten, which is what I was waiting for her to do. So I think she's ready to go home. And she could just kill. We're gonna miss you. Your mummy is gonna be very happy to have you back. How exciting to get it back for your birthday. Mm -hmm. She can give you birthday snuggles. <laughs> Snuggle. Look who's here. Misty. Oh my gosh, she's just cuter than ever. Oh, she's still got that little. Oh, she's got chubby. <laughs> chubby, chubby. Hello, baby girl. Oh, she's purring already. Look who's here. <laughs> birthday, Hugo. Yeah. Well, this is sort of a, good, a birthday a, present. It is, isn't it? The <laughs> best present ever. Best present ever. Oh, she's mm. hugging him. Little <laughs> kid. Why don't you show Misty what you've got for her to take her home in? Look. Little snuggle. Hugo's made you this beautiful bed to go home in. We've all fallen in love with her. <laughs> hey, are we going to miss you, little Misty? <laughs> <laughs> the looks on Faith and Hugo's faces are absolutely priceless. They are grinning from ear to ear and they are showering her with cuddles. They just cannot believe that after all this time, after everything that Misty Blue has gone through, they are finally taking her home. Well, stay in touch, good luck. You guys will be fine. She's very lucky to have Thank you. Thank you so much. She's a lucky girl. <laughs> okay then. See you, Hugo. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Little, little bow. Misty. Bye bye. <laughs> it's a noisy start to the day at the Richmond practice. Hey, come on. Alex has brought in Bruiser and her new puppy Watson. Hard to tell which one is the patient. So we've got Bruiser, who's a seven-year-old Yorkshire Terrier. And I've got Watson, who's a 14-week-old Beagle Cross. Play fighting is a bit of an issue in our household. So is finding people's underpants and chewing them. <laughs> All right, break it up, you two. Hi, Alex, how are you? Hi, I'm okay, thank you. Hello, Turns mate. out it's yeah, Watson so who's in trouble. I think what we might do is I'll bring you and little Watson in the concert room. Yep. And I think your bruiser might need a little bit of a break and a cuddle. <laughs> so, Sam, would you mind taking this little guy? Hey, okay. very sweet. Come on through, Alex. Good boy. That's it. He is absolutely beautiful. But I can see straight away the problem is this right eye. So tell me, how did that happen? I went away with work just for a night um, last week and he was staying with friends. And um, they had a cat. And as you can see, he likes to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to play with the cat and the cat didn't want to play. And the cat's just swiped. And I think the claw's gone straight in. That's your crazy puppy ways that have not paid off because cats generally won't. Uh, have their claws out, they'll retract them and just pat them. Yeah. This wasn't a pat, clearly. Mm. Looking at the eye for the first time, I can see that there is major damage here. This cat has really done a number on poor little Watson. Well, look, I mean, this is a significant injury and actually there's more than one. So the pupil's not moving? Or... The pupil, sadly, isn't moving at all. And certainly when I'm putting this bright light on there, it should constrict. Yeah. So that either means that there's major damage within the eye causing that not to happen, or the light's simply not getting to the back of the eye yeah. and the eye is not feeling this light is not responding to it at all, all of which are not, not great signs. I mean, I feel really sad, like really sad for him because you always want to think that you could have done something more. I don't know, hopefully I'll stop feeling so guilty. He's a good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Watson's right eye is a ticking time bomb. Basically, at any point, it could become painful, it could become infected, leading to a huge amount of pain for him. It is not an eye that is gonna get better. Hey. Hey, Chicky. I put 
this stuff in your eye. Okay? Starts off orange and turns green, and then it'll bind to any damaged tissue on the eye. Okay. Fourteen week old Watson's right eye has been slashed by a cat's claw. Owner Alex is feeling guilty after discovering the damage is permanent. While the eye remains, Watson will always suffer chronic pain. I think the most upsetting thing is that I'm supposed to be looking after him and responsible for him. Like, he looks at me for everything and to look after him, and I, I feel like I haven't. So I'm just going to shine a little bit of UV light in there now. The ulcer, the injury to the protective surface of the eye, the cornea, yeah. um, has already healed, uh, yeah. and there's now a little scar that's present there. OK. So that's good news then, right? I'd love to say it was good news, but sadly, the bigger problem is within. And what I can see is that your little puppy has uh, a cataract that's formed. So what's happened is that this nail has gone so far in, it's actually punctured the lens. The lens is a structure that helps to focus light into the back of the eye, the retina, yeah. uh, and then helps it to determine what image it's looking at. Sadly, we're looking at here is a dog that will lose the ability to see anything really but light and dark. And so then do we make the decision now, a very heartbreaking decision, to actually remove the eye? Okay. So Alex, you've got one big decision ahead of you. This is something that is going to change his life forever. I'm feeling a little bit kind of helpless. There's just nothing that I can do. But let's see how the medication goes. Fingers crossed, you know, we'll, we'll hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Poor boy. At the end of the consultation, there really is only two ways to go. We're gonna try and treat it, give it some medical treatment and just see, will it come right? But I really do feel in my heart of hearts that it won't. And I think Alex knows that. You beautiful, you, you beautiful boy. I'm gonna see her again in a few days time and who knows, it might be a miracle. My guess is it won't and we'll have to remove that eye. Hello. Hiya. Hi. Hi. After 48 hours of soul searching, Alex is back in the Richmond Clinic with Bruiser and 14-week-old Watson. Yeah, see all right, ready for the big, the big arc. The lens of the puppy's right eye has been destroyed by a cat's claw. I don't know, a bit worried. Yeah. Anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. So over the last couple of days I've been thinking, because of the amount of pain that Watson's in and the long-term implications, I've decided it's best just to take the eye out. You have no idea what's going to go on, eh? I didn't want to accept that it had to happen. Because I, I think there's always just been that glimmer of hope that maybe he'll be able to keep the eye and it'll get better. But the more I've looked at it, the more I've noticed kind of actually how bad the damage is. Even seven-year-old Bruiser seems to understand his annoying little brother is not quite his usual self. He obviously has no idea and he's been looking at me like, why are you so upset? <laughs> OK, let me take your little boy. Come here, buddy. All right. I'm right, trying to give mummy a kiss goodbye. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I'll give you a call once he's working up. All OK, right. fantastic. OK. Yeah. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Come on, buddy. I really do feel for Alex. And it's sad, you know, you don't want to do what I'm going to have to do to a puppy. Um, but I suppose that's part of the job of being a vet. Here he is. Hello, little man. Okay. Head vet nurse Emma will be assisting in the operation. Oh, it doesn't seem quite right that he's got to lose an eye. No. Oh. No, it's awful when you feel like you're changing their face forever. I know. Bless his little heart. But you've got a beautiful face regardless, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'll oh, just make you comfortable. Him. Hmm? Come on then. So have a cuddle with Auntie Em. Good boy. Hello, gorgeous boy. Today was the first time that I was able to get a proper look at Watson's eye, um, and it was really quite shocking. I've never seen one that bad in my career of nursing, so it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely one of the worst. Such a horrible injury to think that that claw's yeah. gone right in to the point where it's actually damaged the lens. 
Oh. It is eye-watering, pardon the pun, but it I is. Hey? Would he have been in quite a bit of pain from that? Yeah. I would imagine that's... Absolutely, and, and now he's got an eye that literally doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and there's a bit of a time bomb when it comes to discomfort, so that's why yeah. Alex has made the brave decision to take it out. You'd be better off for it, little man. Just about to go into surgery on Watson's eye, and the main risks are that you might damage the optic nerve. Now, fair enough, you're going to remove the nerve going to this eye, but if you're a little bit too rough, you can actually affect the other eye. So it's a fraught thing because, of course, on one hand, we are removing one eye. You need to be damn sure that you're protecting the sight in the other. All right, let's get going, shall we? Wow. So that's basically the lens that's just starting to leak out into the yeah. front of his eye. You can see the original injury, so that's where the cat's claw would have gone through. It's really so. incredible. It's really incredible. How are you doing up there, Doc? Yep, all good. The top part of the eye is nice and separated, so that's getting there. Yeah. So now I'm at the crucial stage of cutting through the optic nerve. Cutting the nerve, obviously, this means I'm severing his chances of ever being able to see through the eye again. So this is definitely the no turn back moment. Rather than maybe being too concerning, it's just sad. One painful eye now removed. What we need to do now is make sure he looks as handsome as he possibly can. Yes. So. We'll have a nice, handsome Watson to give back to Alex. Yeah, yeah hopefully it's not going to be too much of a shock. Hmm. The surgery seems to have gone very well and Watson seems to be waking up beautifully. He seems nice and comfortable and he can still see out of the left eye. So, good result, really. There we go. You brave boy. Yeah. All over. Yeah, you've been such a brave boy. It's not very often that you have to knock out a puppy of his age, and he's still a baby. And of course, as a dad of three, I like hugging babies. And he's such a cutie that, yeah, waking up from that anaesthetic, he just needs a bit of cuddling and a bit of support. I'm more than happy to give that. You're such a sleepy boy, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Who are we gonna see Watson soon, eh? Excited? Wonder what he's gonna look like. Later that afternoon, Alex arrives with Bruiser to pick up her puppy after his big operation. I'm a bit nervous about seeing him when he comes out. I mean, I've had weird dreams where I've had, like, I've woken up and had one eye. <laughs> OK, then, Sleepy, it's time for you to go and see Mummy. Come on, then. Let's go see her. Hello. Hey. <laughs> There's your boy. Hey. What do you think? Yeah, he looks a bit weird. It was really hard to gauge what Alex thought about the surgery. I think she was just plain shocked that he has changed and he's changed forever. So understandably, she was pretty speechless. Yeah, what did you expect, do you think, from the surgery? I kind of thought that his eye would have sunk in a bit. Like, I didn't think it would be so, like, his eyes just shut. If you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually the plan is uh, I filled his eye with some stuff that helps to keep it nice and puffed out and keeps it looking quite natural. So, yeah, it's yeah. that sort of, I'm just winking. He's just yeah. winking for a long, long time. Now I think Mummy's desperate for a cuddle. <laughs> yeah, on, man. I think. Don't play with cats. Mm, that's, that's a rule to take out of this, I'd say. Yeah, otherwise then you won't have any eyes left. Oh, that would be very, very bad. <laughs> Let's not go there. Just leave those cats alone, hey? It's been a bit of a whirlwind and it's been really stressful, but at least, like, now, just, like, it's over and we just need to get used to what's happened. But, yeah, he doesn't look scary, like Frankenstein or anything. <laughs> All right, Wonderful. all the best. Great Thank to you. see ya. See ya, Bruiser. Come on, Bruiser. Bye, guys. Watson's a happy, healthy dog, and I'm sure he's going to have a great future. Yes, he's only got one eye, but he is a puppy, and he's really just going to get over it. As far as Alex is concerned, I think once she sees that Watson is embracing life and enjoying it, she's going to enjoy it with him too. I just want to get him home and make sure that he's okay and then give him some chicken soup or something. <laughs> Come on. Bruiser. 
Series are coming on you're losing really badly. Come on. As for Watson, having only one eye is clearly not holding him back. I think he looks like he's got a battle scar. Like uh, he's been in a war zone somewhere. So I think he looks like one of the cool kids in the park. Hey, yeah. Hello, Trouble. Hello, <laughs> mates. Look at you. Hey, aren't you looking fantastic? Hey. He's certainly not having any problems seeing, clearly. <laughs> no, no, he's been chasing his tail out of the socket. <laughs> no way, so out of the right-hand side he's chasing his tail? Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty good sign that you're doing quite well. And then as far as sort of responding to the world, now he's only got the, the one beautiful brown eye left. <laughs> How are you finding that? Is he, is he doing well, coping okay? Um, well, he gets more attention now, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> of course he does. Hey? He wouldn't stop for a one-eyed pooch. Hey? <laughs> one-eyed Watson, he's now called One-eyed Watson. Yeah. Sounds good. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> It seems like Watson and Alex are doing fantastically well. Alex has still got a smile on her face after everything they've been through together. And Watson seems like he's just getting on with the job. I mean, he's still a naughty little puppy, getting on well with Bruiser and other dogs in the park. And also it seems that he's getting lots of attention from lots of other girls. Sounds like a terrible, terrible life. <laughs> good boy. Are you a good boy? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Well done, buddy. Well done. Yeah. Good boy. had a call about a Newfoundland, 82 kilo Newfoundland that it's eaten an ice block, but not just an ice block. The whole thing, including the stick. He's a real personality and this is something he'd do. Kylie has been bringing ice cream addict Rowdy to the clinic since he was a puppy. Hey big guy, you've done it this time, haven't you? <laughs> So how long ago did he eat it? Probably about an hour ago now. Okay. And he basically gulped the whole ice block as well as the paddle pop stick yeah. in one go. In one go? Yeah. The critical thing is whether it's, it's still whole or whether it's, it's broken. Sure, it's going to be in smaller pieces, but at the same time, it's going to have sharp edges. So I can't really leave that just to go through his intestines, because if it does, it'll shred them. Not that I'm doubting your intelligence, Rowdy, but he obviously doesn't know what he's just done. Yeah, no, it's happy days for him. He loves ice cream. <laughs> if that's the paddle pop stick and it's got to get out of the stomach, yeah. the stomach's got an opening like this. Yeah, right. We need it to come out like that. Yeah, okay. If it comes out like that, it's not going to come out. It doesn't out. come out. Okay, so I'm just injecting it now. Vet student Ali holds the massive rowdy as Chris injects him with apomorphine. What it does, it, it acts on his whole body basically to make him feel nauseous and he'll then vomit pretty quickly. So he's going to start salivating, just looking a little bit uncomfortable. Until he feels sick, poor little fella. Yeah. Yay! Oh, yay. I, think, I think we all saw it. <laughs> Oh, Chris, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think I wore a bit of it too. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Well done. Oh, puppy, well done. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> That's the best thing of all. Yay, Rowdy. Good boy, mate. Sorry, Dr. Chris. <laughs> How do you Don't get go. that down in one go? He was really hungry for ice cream. So relieved to see that paddle pop stick come up. It's like, yay, and it came out without breaking. You all right? Hell of a night on the tiles, huh? He seems fine, although he looks still a bit sort of down the dumps now, but yeah, I'm very relieved. Up you get, mate. Come on. Good boy. <laughs> very good. Just not too far forward. That's awesome. <laughs> thanks, Dr. Chris. You know, Thank you. Take care. I will, thanks. See ya. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Rowdy's bounced back after swallowing an ice cream stick. Hope you don't mind sharing the shower with him. No, he's fine. But with the temperature soaring at Bondi Beach, the big fella's still pining for his favourite treat. Come on, buddy. Let's go get you an ice cream, huh? It's too hot. No, Kylie hasn't forgotten Rowdy's scary emergency. I could not bear going through that drama ever again. It was kind of funny, but it was also so stressful. So now, although he's still allowed a treat occasionally, I make sure it's an ice cream without a stick in it. Because he loves his ice cream. Good boy. Happy days.